Hallelujah. Welcome to Bible study. The Word of God is alive and is sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, it is the ability to go and penetrate even the most, the tiny details, the tiny things in your life. And it can go out and reveal those things that need to be revealed. And it can pierce out and take away and remove those things that need to be done. So we need to start learning the Word of God. The Word of God is not something just to put about and, and pick up on a Bible Sunday and, and pick it up and use it as that way. No, no. The Word of God is supposed to what we're supposed to feed on every day because that's what's going to reveal who we really are. With that, let's pray with God. Let's, let's pray to God and believe with Him. Father, we thank You for Your grace and goodness. Father, may we have more revelation of You all the time. May our eyes of understanding be enlightened to reveal and see who You really are. May we know the power and the name of Jesus. Father, may we not be afraid of who we are called to be. But Father, may we stand up in the triumph of Christ Himself. Yes, Lord, surely good things are going to happen, Lord Father. Yes, Lord, You are faithful. You are wonderful. You are gracious in every way, Father. We thank you, Father, for it. We praise you, Lord Father. And we cast all our cares upon you, Lord Father. Give us hearing ears and an open heart and a mind that is sharpened to receive from you. Father, we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So if you've been with this journey with us, you know, we're talking about the second coming of Christ. We've been talking about how the Jewish people, are. I, there's so much prophecy given so of what, what, what not and what, what will happen to them and how they are supposed to be the timepiece of God. They are the witnesses of God and many things will happen, okay? So as we're going on this journey, uh, we will... We, it's time we learn, you know, how the Jewish actually will have this revelation of Christ. Remember, the Jewish people are the very ones who actually hung, crossed on the, uh, hung Christ on the cross. They are the ones who told, him, told the, the leaders that, you know what, we, we don't want this Christ. This is not the Christ we call for. This is not who we said. You know, they, they accused him of things and actually the ones who very hanged him and brought him to death. So... So that is why this has been given. The rejected one has been given the opportunity and allowed the church, us who are Gentiles, to be grafted in into this kingdom of God. Okay, The Jewish, uh, what was the failure of the Jewish has actually become a grace to us. The failure of the Jewish has become the grace to us because we have been now given this opportunity to be grafted into the kingdom of Christ. Okay, Without that, we would not have been. Okay, uh, if the Jews had not uh, uh, delivered up Christ, if they had not put him out on the Christ, if they had believed him as their Messiah, as who he really is, then they would have gone through because that's what the faithfulness of God would have allowed. Okay, so, so now the Jews have come into this place, you know, uh, we're talking about the second coming of Christ. We're talking about this moment where they will learn more about Christ, understand. Okay, right? so I want to take you to a scripture. Uh, let's go to Zechariah and go to chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Um, and I'm reading here from verse 10. Okay, if you've got your Bibles open, let, let's go to verse 10. And it says here, And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they have pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And grieve for him as one grieves his for a firstborn. In that day there shall be a, like a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning at Hadid Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. And, and what is what he's really talking about? He's talking about this time when, when the Jewish people will actually come to the realization that this Christ is their Messiah. Okay, uh, a, a few of them have believed, a few of them here and there had believed. But when it comes to the revelation of the whole Jewish people, that this is the Messiah that we call for. Okay, because you see, remember, the Jewish people believe in Jehovah. They are continuing to believe in Jehovah. They are believing that Jehovah God is there. And a lot of times they are doing the things of the Old Testament. They are doing the things of the works of the saints. They are celebrating the same events uh, and continue to do so because they don't have a, what we call a revelation of the messianic, um, messianic Christ. They don't have the revelation of who Christ is in their life. So in reality, they are still continuing to living in this religious idea of following the law, or, or finding themselves in the law when the truth is that Christ has come and they also need this Christ to be saved. Okay, so 
this place after the tribulation when God reveals himself to his people, when he comes about and his brightness, that's the moment that Jewish people will actually realize, come to the realization that this is the Messiah we talked about. Why is that? Because it's important to understand. For the Jewish, they have been received a promise here about the Messiah. The first one is that he would come away and take away the pains of sin. He would come about and destroy the works of the devil. But there was another part there was that he would rule and reign. A and for many people, that's where they're stuck is that they have seen a Christ. They have seen a Christ-like figure, but they could not understand his, his, his bearing of sin upon our lives. But they couldn't understand his reigning and ruling part. So their eyes have clearly sought and, and are continuing to search for this ruling and reigning Christ. They're looking for the Messiah that is going to rule and reign over all the kingdoms, that is going to destroy and physically destroy kingdoms. And that's what they were actually looking for. And they missed it about because they didn't realize that this is going to happen in a two-part situation. They didn't realize that the first one would happen before, as Christ was here, sacrificing himself for us for the sins of this world and then he was going to come again and rule and reign so they're confused about that and that's why one of the biggest reasons is they don't have a realization of christ okay so they have rejected christ for a lot longer and yet god told for sales in the scriptures that they are going to come back that they are going to have a revelation see the jewish are not going to be cast out they're going to have a revelation a realization of who christ is and they will understand better because you know why? Because they are actually praying to a Jehovah God who is Father God. And that's what they're praying to. And so this realization will be like this, uh, how we say, it? you know, how Isaiah says in chapter 60 verse 1, he says, you know, arise and shine for your light has come. And that's what's going to happen to the Jews. There's, they're going to come out of this slumber of darkness because they're going to have this realization of who Christ is. Okay. So, uh, and, and we talked about this. That is why... The, the how we talked about what, what, what the Jewish people are and how they, they are looking for this place of where Christ is ruling and reign. Okay, so so and, and we understand this. There is going to be a time what we call uh, a time where Jesus is going to rule and reign on this world. Okay, so let's let's talk about his that moment in time. This is after the tribulation. Jesus has come in his brightness. He's as soon as he enters, he defeats the devil. Devil has no uh, no say over him, no 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 competition whatsoever, nothing whatsoever against him, and he rules and reigns. And that's the time when he's going to rule for a millennium on this world. So what will that millennium look like? Okay, why is that? Because this millennium time is an incredible time. You and I have not seen a time like this. You know why? Because while understand this, while we are on this earth. Satan has continued to have this, this little dominion over this world. And wherever Satan is, he, he brings with him death, pain, sickness, disease, whatsoever. All of these things. All of these things are caused through Satan. Okay, They do not occur on their own. The dead spirit in us allows those things to occur and it attracts those things and brings those things to reality. In the millennial time, when Christ is ruling on this earth, the truth is, there will be no Satan. And when there is no Satan, where there is no devil, the works of the devil will not exist. And these works of the devil, of sickness, disease, pain, sickness, uh, of death itself, will not occur. So that is how beautiful a time this millennia will look like. Uh, uh, and, and that's what it's like. You know, the scriptures, uh, uh, there are many scriptures that describe it. Uh, this is the easiest way to go. Let, let, let's go to Isaiah. Um, let's go to Isaiah chapter 35. Okay. Isaiah chapter 35. And let's read here from verse 5 to 10. So this will help you to understand where we're going. I hope you understand. We're going in a flow where we're understanding, you know, what is happening to the church. We've been raised up with Christ. We had the supper time. Jesus is coming back. The time of tribulation happened. Now Jesus has come back. He's ruling and now, and that's where we are at this moment, okay? So the second coming of Christ, is we, that's what we're talking about, okay? Uh, Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 5, 5 to 10, let's read. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of death shall not be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. 
for the water shall burst forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. Verse 7, the parched ground shall become like a pool and the thirsty land spring of water. In the inhabitations of jackals, each where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and a road and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not come pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy in their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness, and the sorrow and sighting shall flee away. All the scripture, I, I want to go back to the scripture and learn about, you know, all of these things talks about those times of the very opposite of what it looks like to have the curse on your life. Uh, the times of greenness, that's a blessing. The time when the enemies are not coming against you, that they, when the lions are not devouring all everything around you. You know, all these things are talking about this time of blessedness. And it's talking about this time where, when Christ is going to rule and reign in the millennium. And this is what the millennium will look like. How amazing it will be that we will be in this place where we'll see no death. We will see no sickness. And we will see no lack. We will, it's going to be this glorious moment. And the whole world's center will be this, this place where Jesus is reigning from. And that is Jerusalem. And that is where he's going to rule and reign from. So... He, it's going to happen and and the truth is there is another thing that's going to happen after after the millennium will come through now what will happen is that God is going to loosen Satan again on this world to see who have actually believed even after a millennia people will fall away because they will be deceived by Satan saying that this is not God how amazing, how, how foolish and how, how amazingly deceived we need to be. And yet that will happen. And that will happen. Satan will come and rule and reign. And Revelation talks about this. And let's go to, I wanted to learn from scripture, okay. Uh, go to Revelation chapter, chapter 20 verse 7. This is where he talks about this time. Okay. Uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 7. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. And we will go out to deceive and he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. And this is what the Satan will do. Even out of his coming out, he is going to go to this place and, and, and try to get to as many as he can to deceive. And then what will happen is that now God is going to show the real restraint. He's going to come out and he's going to say, you know what? Now all things are need to be made anew. He's going to set up this place where there is a new earth and the new, new heavens. And before that, what will happen is what we call the great white throne judgment. Okay, uh, let's read here. Continue. If you open up with Revelation verse chapter 20, uh, it's not far down. Let's go to verse 11. Verse 11 to verse 15. Let's read here. Then I saw a great white throne, and in him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. So there's two books that are open, okay? One, that were, one book was open. And the other was the book of life was opened in front. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered the dead that were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. And this is the important part. Anyone who was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And this is the judgment that we're looking forward to. This is the judgment where we are going to be realized, you know what? This is the only place you need your name. This is the only place where, you know, you can have a lot of people talk about you. You can have a lot of history tale about you. People can say, say great things about you. At the end of the day, the only place where your name actually needs to reside is in this book of life. 
because if the name is not in the book of life, you will be cast into this fire and that is going to be eternity. This is where eternity starts. Eternity starts after the white throne judgment where there is nothing more left. There is only two things happening. One thing is either you are put into the lake of fire or you're going to this new earth and new heaven and you're going to live in that place. So that is the two different places where we are going to go. And that is going to happen after the white throne judgment. So what is the good news for the church? We have the opportunity to have our name written in the book of life through the Son of God, through Christ Himself, through the blood of Jesus, who Himself has written our names in the book of life. And now we are there written in and we have nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. We are going to see this beautiful time where God is going to make up the new heavens and the new earth. And, and no one can bypass it. Remember, the word of God says no one's going to bypass it. Uh, God is going to tell death and Hades, uh, Hades and, and death itself. You know, that means everyone who's died, everyone who's, who's waiting in, in Hades for judgment. All of these people, he's going to bring them back up. All the seas, all the land, every single one who has ever lived on this world is going to face through this judgment and the requirement will be is your name in the book of life is your name in the book of life and that's where we're going to find ourselves and that's what we need to do when we talk about the new heavens and the new earth uh Je revelation chapter 21 says says it beautifully and, and i want you to read here from verse one and now i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. And, and all these things, they, there's so much more that, you know, I want you to read on to from verse, uh, till verse 8. And you will realize, you know, how many things are happening and, and there's so, certain things are not existing. But what is coming to the realization that, you know, what makes me joyous is that this is going to be something entirely new. This earth that we look at, you know, it's not going to exist. We are so bound to this earth sometimes. We are so bound to giving our lives for this earth. We don't realize that this earth is not going to remain. This earth is just an address given by God for His people for this time. But He's actually making a new place. He's already envisioned a new place. He's already prophesied a new place. That's where we're going to belong. And that's going to be such an amazing place again. You know why? Because it's going to be looking like the best place where we could be. How great a time to rejoice in that. You know, uh, and this is the time, what I will say, when the church comes into its absolute inheritance. Absolute inheritance. That means it's going to come to a place where it belongs. Everything has been given under the church. And that is where it's going to be. The new heavens and the new earth is going to be given under the church, the righteousness of God. And that's where we're going to rule and reign. Wealth and riches and all these things of ages to come to pass. All of these things will be ours. And we're going to enjoy those things because God is setting us up for that place. So I hope you really learned something here tonight. You know, I just want to summarize a few things about the second coming of Christ. You know, the first thing is this, we don't need to fear. Okay, there is nothing, no reason to fear because we have been called by God and those who have been set apart from God are going to go with God before the time of tribulation. No one's going to be left behind. All are going to go with God before the time of tribulation for a marriage supper with God himself. Okay, while we're going for supper, there is the tribulation that is occurring here. That will be a time of, of where the Satan as a lawless one will rule and reign. He will try and deceive people as we can, as much as he can. He will try and show his power and might because the Holy Spirit will be taken up with the church. So everything will rule. He will try and do all that he can do, all the mess that he can create, he will do. And there will be still people who will be here who have not known Christ. And they will come to this realization because... Now what will happen after the tribulation is that Jesus will come again and he's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. In his brightness, the works of the devil will be just cast out. He will be of nothingness and he will come and rule. Jesus will come and rule and reign and people will come to the, the Jewish will come to the realization that this is the Messiah we've been really believing for. This is the Messiah we've been talked about and he is true. And he's going to rule there for a millennium. He's going to be for a thousand years. He's going to rule there. And there will be no death, no sickness, no pain whatsoever. And after that millennium, 
God is going to allow Satan to be loosened again so that he would see how many he can deceive and those people who have actually believed for faith, have they believed or have they believed just because there was nothing else to believe for. And by faith, those who will continue in Christ, you know, what will happen is that then the white throne judgment will come. God will see whose names are written in the book of life and they will come to come to the new heavens and those who have not been written in the name of book of life, they will be thrown into the, sea, into the lake of fire. That is the whole coming of Christ in summary that I've given you. But there's a lot more that you can go. I encourage you to go out and read the word of God. Go out and learn and learn these things, you know. You know, because the more you learn, the less fear you'll have and the more faith you'll have. The less fear you'll have about all the situation, the more faith you'll have in what God is doing. And we start believing Him, trusting Him and putting our faith in Him. I hope you really learned something here tonight. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, Lord. You will surely are good, Lord. You are surely faithful, Lord, in every way. Surely good things are going to happen, Lord. Father, your grace is mighty, amazing in this place, Lord, Father. Father, thank you for clarity in our hearts. Father, for wisdom and understanding, Lord, Father. May we find more of you. May we have a more understanding of what you are speaking to us, Father. Let us not be frailed away, Lord Father. Let us not be slain away, Lord Father. But truthfully, let us be focused on the Messiah, our Jesus, our Christ, as our God Almighty. Father, we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I hope you really learned here something tonight. Till next time, I want to see you again today. And till next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLM Fiji. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLM Fiji to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.